human teeth and there would have been nothing wrong with them if she didn't have many, many more than any person should have. Her jaw opened wide, very wide. It opened from the bottom of one ear to other, teeth showing in their entirety as she gave a nice big smile at the camera. I was disgusted by whatever photoshop job this must have been, but I was also intrigued. It was a really good edit after all. I thought it must have been some artist who wanted to show off their skills or something, but before I engaged in any chats with this match, I noticed they had more photos. Five more. I swiped to the second one. The same girl in the same dress and all the same grotesque facial feature was front and center in this photo once again. But both the quality and setting of this one were much different. It looked like it was taken with a cell phone. The picture wasn't even level, but that's not the detail I first recognized. She was levitating off the ground. The ground as well as the walls and the ceiling were seemingly made of corpses. All that provided light in the photo were half-melted candles on the ground and the flash from the camera. This one looked too real. Bodies all had pretty distinctive features. It almost made me sick. Some looked like they were mere skeletons with everything decomposed. Others looked fresh, very fresh. One thing that many of them seemed to have in common was they were missing a lower jaw and all detail. I scrolled past this one quicker than the last. It upset me the more I looked at it, but the third was more confusing. The third picture was of her once again, and in her black dress as she hovered in the middle of an empty field this time. The quality of this picture was like that of the first. It seemed as if it were professionally taken and edited. The sky was an impossible shade of red. As a consequence, the entire image had sort of a red tint to it. Other than that, it simply looked as if it were some sort of farmland. This one didn't disturb me like the last, but it had an eerie feel to it. It was as if this picture were taken in the apocalypse and like it was showing me the end of the world. Once again, I thought this must have been some sort of artist trying to compel these sort of feelings with the pictures and the way they took and edited them. I was impressed as I was disturbed. I mean, she sounds like a catch to me. The fourth photo made my heart sink a little bit. This picture of the girl was taken in front of a building on my university campus. A building not even five minutes walk away. It was nightmare and she was alone. She was once again floating, yet this time above the stairs, in front of the columns of the building. She didn't look any less real in this photo. I scrolled back through the first view and noticed how surprisingly alike she looked in all the pictures, despite their different angles. This art was too good. It was making me sick. The fifth picture, I thought, must be impossible. It was offered inside another building, but I knew what building it was. I knew it from the colors on the wall. I knew it from the lights above her floating body. Most of all, I knew where she was because of the numbers on the door behind her. It was only a few doors down from my apartment. The apartment I was in right now. I quickly scrolled to the last photo. It 
was a close-up of a right in front of my door. I dropped my phone and ran to my door to make sure it was locked. Luckily, it was. I am always good about that, but out of curiosity, I thought I would peek through the people to see if someone did happen to be there. I place my eye upon the hall where I got a glimpse of shoulders and back of a head with long black hair. In a quick motion, the head turned around while the shoulders remained still. It was her. She widened her smile ear to ear once again. I jumped back from the door. I ran to the desk and picked up my phone. Of course, the disgusting picture of her in front of my door was the first thing to pop up as I opened my phone. I quickly exited Tinder and dialed 911. An operator picked up. 911, what's your emergency? I knew that location was the first thing you should give out in a 911 call because if something happens to you while you're on the line, they only have the possibility of helping you if they know where you are. I gave the operator my location and then a brief tedious course summary of the past few minutes. I left out some of the more extreme details because I wanted it to be taken seriously. There is someone outside my apartment door. I just got a match on Tinder. When I clicked in to see the photo, she had a bunch of weird ones of her in. Look, it doesn't matter, but she's messed up. Very messed up. The last two photos were of her outside my apartment door, and when I went to look at the people, she was still there. I don't know how, but please send help. Alright, sir. Has she threatened you in any way? Has she tried to break into your apartment? We can't just send an officer because you feel scared of some girl you met on Tinder who happens to live in the same apartment building as you. Are you calling because she looks different? I was speechless. I was infuriated. How could they do this? Did they think it was ridiculous I was calling them because of a girl? I exploded into a rant over the phone. So what if she hasn't done anything yet? What the hell is wrong with you? She found me apartment, my exact apartment, and is standing outside of it. We only met minutes ago. This isn't right. I need. There was a sudden silence on the other end. I felt like I was about to scream. 911 just hung up on me. I was eyeing up my door for a second when I heard someone on the phone once again. It was someone different. He talked once again. This time my phone was up to my ear. Sir, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Yes, I'm here, I replied desperately. Sir, who you were just talking to was not 911 dispatch. I need you to listen to my next instruction very carefully. If you hear another voice than mine on this call, you need to hang up immediately and wait for me to call back. If the entity you have encountered attempts to communicate with you in any way, for the time being, you need to ignore it. Do not leave your apartment unless I instruct you to. Now, I need your precise location. We got onto this one early, so we should be able to contain it with ease. I was hesitant to even talk. Are, are, are you the police? No. I work, for an, uh, I work for an agency whose purpose is to locate and contain or eliminate entities like the one you have had. The unfortunate lack of encountering tonight. I need your location. Now. Maybe I was stupid for giving this man on the phone my location, but everything that had just hit me, I didn't hesitate. I give him my address and apartment number. He was silent for only about 15 seconds. Alright, a team is en route to your apartment. Sit tight. Now we need to lay out a few more rules. Have the floor plans for your apartment. It looks like you've got a studio with one closet and one bathroom. Can you fit inside your closet? Uh, yep, yeah, but why would I need to? If the lock on your apartment door is unlocked, I need you to quickly shut off the lights and climb into your closet. Be silent. I'm you hear the door shut once again. 
closet full. If you hear splashing coming from your toilet, I need you to flush it immediately and close the lid. I need you to repeat this instruction back to me so that I know you understand. Okay, if I hear my door unlock, quickly shut off my lights and hide in the closet. Turn off any sinks or my shower. If they turn themselves on and flush the toilet and close the lid, if I hear anything from it, I don't understand how these things can happen or why I would do any of this. If you want to live long enough to see the sunrise tomorrow, you follow these instructions exactly. Write them down if you need to. I'm going to need any details and evidence you have that you haven't said over the phone already. Yes, I could still hear what you were saying at the beginning of the call. You said you matched with her on Tinder. Does she have a name? Yes, I matched with her on Tinder, but her profile didn't have any name or age, just pictures that. Once again, I was interrupted by the new operator. It seemed he was urgent to exchange as much information as possible. Witnessing what I had, I didn't object. I need you to screenshot those pictures if you can. Is it still possible for you to access them? Yes, give me one moment. I opened Tinder up again and clicked on the profile. I quickly screenshotted each picture. Now what? What do you want me to do with them? Text them to the 911 number. Trust me, it'll work. I sent each picture as fast as I possibly could. Alright. Looks like I've got seven. Give me a moment while I send these over to our Intel team for identification. We might be able to find out enough about this thing to get rid of it right away. I need you to keep an eye out of your window on the street. There will be... Wait. Wait, did you say seven? I sent six. Her profile had six pictures. How did you get seven? I quickly opened back up my text. I did set seven. The first six were of her profile, but the seventh was of me. It was taken from outside my window, right outside, and it was recent. I recognized the clothes I was wearing today. On the upper left-hand side of the picture was a handheld pressed against my window. I quickly turned towards my window to see no one there. There could have been. It was on the third floor and there was nothing on that side of the building that would allow someone to climb that high. No one could have been up there to take a picture. I was quick to let the operator know, though I was not calm. I didn't send the last one. It sent by itself through my phone somehow. It's of me just a minute ago while we were talking. Alright, calm down. It's trying to scare you. It wants to get in your head. It wants you worked up so that you'll do something rash. But you're not going to do that, are you? No, no sir. Alright, good. Now, as I was saying, there will be one man and one woman in black suit and holding a briefcase that get out of a large SUV. The driver has been instructed to drop them off on the side of your apartment. He knows where it is. They should be arriving right about now. Go check outside your window. I looked outside my window down to the street below, but I didn't see any SUV or two people in suit. All I saw there were a few pedestrian and a university bus. I don't see anyone down there. Are you sure they're on that side? It's easy to end up on the wrong street down here. Yes, I am sure. You're certain you don't see any anyone, no SUV. I'm sorry, but no, I don't. Fuck. I heard him mutter under his breath. I then faintly heard his voice yelling towards someone else. They ain't it. Tell them to keep moving. He then adjusted his mic and began talking to me again. Alright, they've been swindled by the entity. We're figuring that out now. Just be on the lookout for them to arrive. Once they get there, we can start the process of getting rid of this thing. Right then, I heard a firm knock at my door. I walked over and peeped through the hall again. One man and one woman, both in very nice black 
tracksuits. I think your agents are here. They knocked on the door and I saw them through the people. Should I let them in? The operator practically screamed through the phone. No, no, don't let them in. Those are not our agents. That is the entity trying to get you to open the door. Don't fucking do it. Our agents will not knock. They will try to get into your door. Get back to your window and watch them to arrive. Tell me when they do. After a few minutes of waiting, I finally saw a large SUV pull up in front of the apartment and two people get out. One man, one woman, nice suits and briefcases. After they got out of the car, they looked up to my window as they made their wear. After they got out of the car, they looked up at the window as they made their way towards the entrance. The SUV drove off. Alright, they're here. Good. They're going to scout out the building, figure out what we're dealing with, and assess if another need and assess if another team needs to be called in. I'll let you know anything you need to do when I found out. Just stay on the line. I had started to feel relieved, albeit more confused. I didn't believe these people were here to help, but I didn't know what they could do to help me. How could these two people from whatever this organization was possibly deal with this, this thing at my door? I contemplated the possibility as I sat down in my chair for the first time in a while, finally calming down a little. This little moment of peace was just that, for not long after I sat down, I heard an electronic click from the door as I jumped from my seat. I remembered the operator's instruction. I quickly hit the light switch and picked up the kitchen knife before hopping into my closet. The door just unlocked. I'm hiding with the lights off as he told me. I whispered into my phone. He responded quietly and with as fast as message he could muster. Just be quiet and don't move. She can open your closet door and she has no interest in taking your things. No matter what she says, do not respond and do not react. Do not leave the closet until you hear the door close again. Do not hang up this call. As soon as she finished speaking, the door opened. I didn't hear any footsteps, but I knew she was in. I focused on controlling my breathing to make it as quiet as possible. I must have been in there for a good five minutes before I heard any noise. Nothing. Not a step. Not a door opening. Not a single thing moved around. I couldn't hear. I couldn't even hear breathing. I was tempted to leave. I did as I was told and stayed still. Doing that had served me well up until this point. I just about gasped and gave myself away when she eventually spoke in a sweet and dulcet voice. What's wrong? Don't want to hang out tonight. After she got no response, she would wait about 10 seconds and say something new, trying to be provocative each time. This went on for a few minutes. Come on, we matched and you know it. You know you want me and, and I want you. Well, if you're not ready yet, that's alright. I can wait. I can wait a long time. I'll wait for however long I need for you to come out. You know I don't Thank you.
Eventually, she was so close to the closet door, she was practically touching it. She might have been. It was obvious she knew I was in there, but the operator said the zip put and that she couldn't open the door. I trusted him for now. You know, you're a worthless, rotting sack of shit. You know I've been good enough for the maggots. You've done nothing with your meaningless, short life, and you will never will. Even if I let you live past this night, you can come with me or you can burn. No one is coming to save you. No one can. She stopped for a moment. I think she heard what I heard. There were steps in the hallway. Someone was walking around on my floor. I you talked to them. She let out a giggle, one that would have seemed innocent and cute if it weren't giving in any other context with a normal girl, but I found it to be far from it. You fucking bitch, you'll pay for that. You won't even get what I gave the others. I'll rip your guts out right before your eyes and make you watch all of it. You wish you were dead, but I won't kill you. Not until. Approaching entity manifestation now. Stand by. I heard a man's voice say from just outside my apartment. She screamed in fury before I heard my apartment door slam shut a split second later with a force I don't think I could rep. I don't think I could replicate with all my might if I tried. I exited my closet and turned my light back on as I ran to the door to look at the people. I couldn't see anything. What just happened? I think I heard one of your people outside my door before she charged out really angry. As the operator who had our still was on the line. One of them tried to catch her right there. It didn't work. It wasn't fully manifested. He, as well as his partner, are trying to locate the entity now, but we're having no success. Our larger team is very close. No need to look out for this one. We know how to get there now. Our priority has changed from containment to extermination. This one is much more dangerous than we could have predicted. What am I supposed to do now? voice on the line immediately changed from the man's voice to the girl's enraged voice. You should open the fucking door and let me in. I immediately hung up as I was told. This may have saved me for the moment, as in the process of hanging up, I noticed my phone was at 2% battery. I quickly found a charger and plugged my phone in. A minute later, I got a call back from 911. I promptly answered. Are you still there? Did it try to use someone else's voice? It used its own voice to tell me to open the door. I heard shuffling from outside my room. I first thought that she was back, but I noticed it was a lot of people this time. I could hear faint dialogue from outside the room, and it sounded like they were assembling a piece of furniture. Do you know who is outside my room right now? I asked the operator. Our second team arrived a few minutes ago. Some of them are downstairs setting up a base for this operation. Others are up by your room preparing equipment. Just let them do the thing and this will be over real soon. As long as we're fighting what we think we're fighting. Dear God, I hope so. What about my neighbors? What about the people walking around in the hallways and everyone else in this building? Do they know about this? Are they in danger? What happens to them? Okay, I forgot to tell you. They're just not here. I don't know how to explain it to you in a way you would understand. They won't be seeing our team, you or this entity for the time being. They certainly are in any danger if that brings any comfort afraid you still are. I was again confused by this new piece of information, but I didn't have the energy to question it at this point. I just wanted this to be done and over with as soon as possible. It's here. I heard a woman assert from right outside my door. I heard a few different things turn on. I don't know what they were, but I take it they were some sort of machinery or equipment they had just finished setting up. A few moments of silence passed before I heard a man mutter, Oh, shit. Second later, I heard light bulbs explode before gunfire erupted.
the shooting went on for only a minute or two, after which I heard a few magazines drop to the floor and some rifles being racked, as well as some louder dialogue and cursing. I started to put on my shoes, hoping this was over now, but besides that, I felt safer with shoes on anyway. Did I get it? I hopefully asked the operator. No, no, it blowed right through our guys and got away somewhere in the stairwell. She killed a couple of them and injured a couple more as well. We underestimated her again, but now we know what we have to do. We're almost through with this. Just keep a level head and you'll be alright. I sat down, silenced. Two people just died on my behalf. Two people died because I, being the stupid teenager I am, had to be on Tinder messing around. I checked my phone. He hadn't got a much more of a charge by this time. It was only at 7%. I waited there for another 5 minutes. I just sat and killed with my head resting in my hands, thinking of how all of this could have been avoided before I heard something coming from my bathroom. I picked up my phone, unplugged it and walked over, pushing the door open to get a peek. Hands were coming out of the toilet bowl and gripping the seat. She pushed down against the seat of the toilet as she attempted to force herself up out of my toilet. I screamed and fell back against the wall. Her head made it out. She was wounded, blood covering her face and arms. I could see that one of her eyes had been shot out and blood still ran from the socket. She turned towards me as she attempted to pull the rest of her cell up. She clenched her jaw but revealed all of her teeth to me, also covered in blood. Oh my god, she's climbing out of my toilet. It's too late. Go, run, now. Do you understand? Get out of your apartment. I unlocked my door as I charged out. All of the lights were out. They had been all shattered. The hallway looks like a trench from a war. Blood lined the floor and was splattered along the walls and ceiling. There was a broken equipment equipment that was alien to me all up and down the hallway, which I narrowly missed while running away from my room. I could feel the spent brass underneath my feet. The worst sight was the bodies. Two men in body armor with rifles strapped around them lay lifelessly on the ground. One was flipped over and had a trail of blood behind him as if he was thrown. The other had his upper body propped against the wall. His lower jaw had been ripped out as blood came from his mouth and throat and colored his black uniform red. I dearly wish I was watching the ground in front of me as I ran because I took not two steps ahead and stepped right onto this man's jaw. I can't even begin to tell you how I felt feeling that beneath my foot as I ran. I could feel his teeth. Where do I go now? What do I do now? I frantically asked the operator. Get to the stairwell. Go down. Get to the stairwell. Go down. I know you're used to there only being a few flights of stairs because the first floor is where they ended. You'll notice they go down further this time. I need you to proceed until you reach the bottom. There you'll find where our team set up their base of operations. I ran down the stair faster than I think I'd ever run down a flight of stairs before. I didn't feel like I was going to trip or like my legs were getting too tired. Rather, I felt as though my legs were outpacing me. It must have been a good ten floors worth of stairs before I reached the bottom, but I got there quickly with the energy I had. At the bottom of the stairs were tons and tons of boxes. They looked as they were military grade or just made to carry really expensive things. A number of them were open and their contents were emptied. I guess this is where all of their fancy equipment came from. A number of them were open and their contents were emptied. I guess this is where all of their fancy equipment came from. That they were trying to use upstairs on a few of them were laptops. As I walked over to one. I was startled by what I walked past. Between a couple of rows of these boxes, I found another corpse. This one I recognized as being one of the two in 
suit who had come in earlier. It was the woman. She liked the one man, and I assumed the other from my floor had her jaw ripped out as well. In her hand was a revolver, a very shiny and quite beefy looking 357 Magnum. I set my phone on a box for a moment as I checked it out. I opened the cylinder and found that none of the six primers had been struck. This poor woman couldn't even get a shot off before being ripped apart. I found another one of your team members dead. It's the woman who came in first with the man earlier. I notified the operator. What? What that's not possible, we just had communication with her. She was supposed to stay there while the rest of the team... Oh no. What? The, the rest of the team had another engagement with the entity on the high floor. The last known contact with it was four minutes ago. Our last communication with the agent here next to it was less than a minute ago. The thing is in there with you somewhere. Just then, the lights in the stairwell from top to bottom all exploded in rapid succession. I jumped into a corner and aimed the revolver at the stairs. A moment passed before I began to see a red light illuminate the stairs above me. Despite being shattered, the lights began working once again, one by one. They turned on as they had been shattered. I heard humming from many floors above, but I could hear it getting closer. She's coming. What the hell do I do now? Get on one of the computers down there. We've cracked its code. I'm sending you a sound file. Turn up the volume on the laptop. When it gets close, place the audio file. Once it... My phone has died. And I thought I was too. Fortunately, I kept a level head as the operator told me to. I kept myself as calm as possible. As the army got closer and made its way down the stairs, I ignored it, set the revolver down next to the laptop and looked through what I could. It was in some sort of a weird operating system and I had no idea how it worked. I found some of some sort of messaging system like an email, though I didn't think it was quite that, and found a recent message. This had to be it. I downloaded and opened the contact turning up the laptop volume to max. The humming stopped as I heard a giggle from right behind me and a playful voice say, What do you think you're doing? I already told you what was going to happen to you. Are you ready for a kiss now? I stood up, taking a deep breath and slowly turning around with one hand still on the box front of me. Well, you better come give it to me. I somehow was able to deliver with a straight face despite being more afraid than I ever have in my life, which I assumed was about to end. She approached slowly, opened, opening up her smile from ear to ear once again. Slimy, viscous saliva gushed out of her mouth as she came closer. I hit the space bar on the laptop before throwing myself to the ground, away from her. An annoying, constant, high-frequency noise filled the stairwell and hurt my ears, but it did much worse for her. Her feet touched the ground, no longer levitating. She covered her ears tightly and her massive jaw practically unhinged from her head as she screamed in agony. I reached up for the revolver next to the laptop. I pulled it in close before cocking it. Then I got two hands on it and pointed it forward. I was shaking from the adrenaline, but I managed to get my breathing under control for just long enough to level the rear sights with the front. I squeezed it. Blood splattered on the stairs behind her as part of her head was blown clean off. I stood and backed up the trigger as many times as I could. Even though when the cylinder was empty, I pulled the trigger a few more times. Once my ears stopped ringing, an application opened on the laptop. The sound file finished playing and I heard the voice of the operator once again. Anomalous presence no longer detected. You did it, kid. I had no idea how, but you did it. It's over. I 
stood for a moment and observed the carnage. The red lights faded until they were gone. In darkness once again, I was in disbelief. Both the watches went down and that I was able to stop this thing. Whatever it was, I don't think I'll ever know. I began to walk up the stairs, slow and tired. After I made it up a few flights, I saw bright beams coming from flashlights above. A couple of dozen people in body armor strapped with expensive rifles and submachine guns round down the stair past me. The man in the suit reached down and grabbed the revolver in my hand as I was passing him. I think subconsciously, I chucked it away and aimed it at him. He backed up for a moment. Easy now, son. It's all over. You can relax. I took a deep breath and handed over the empty revolver to him. I walked back up to my room, plugged my phone in and started it up. I just sat with my head resting on my desk for a while before I got another call from 911. I picked it up and the operator began to speak once again. Well, you did it. We've been hunting this one for a while now. It's got a more victim than almost all of the others combined, but now it's gone. Thanks to you. Are you injured? I can get the paramedics to you if you need them. I just sat in silence. I didn't have the energy to speak anymore. All right. You might need a minute to decompress and catch your breath, it seems. Stay in your room for the next hour and everything will be back to the normal outside of your apartment. Our team, all of the equipment and the chaos left in the wake of all this will be out of sight and out of mind. I know it doesn't make any sense to you and that will only make processing all of this harder. Just know that if you call your emergency line again, we'll be listening. We'll be here to help. Oh, and one more thing. You'll be doing not just us, but the whole world and yourself a favor if you never spoke about this as if it happened. Our anonymity and secrecy let us help everyone else out there. I hope you understand. Goodbye now and stay safe. If you read this far, you know I ignored the last thing the operator said to me. I want everyone out there to know. I want everyone to know that you could become the victim of one of these things in the blink of an eye. And I want you to know that there are people out there hunting them down. And they seem to not exist by any publicly displayed government information. I want people to know what to do when they call 911. I have no proof. My apartment building did return to normal. I am suddenly missing the text history I had with 911. I am not matched with a profile on Tinder. I have nothing. I also want to know more. Have any of you fallen victim to one of these things? Have any of you heard of them? What are they? Do you know more about this organization? How was my apartment building changed that night? How was reality bent and shaped back to normal? Please reach out. I need to know more. I was just about to hit the post button when my phone suddenly blew up. You've got a new match. You've got a new match. You've got a new match. My phone displayed it a hundred times over. They're coming for me now. I need to make a call. The end. So... Was that a true story? Well, we'll never know, do we? I guess we just have to be a little bit more careful. Um, and I think it does pay off to look through their trash. This way, you can figure out if they are what they say. And even further, you can even sneak into their bedroom, find their diary, Make sure they're not dating anyone else. Love is a dangerous thing.